The Senate on Tuesday advocated stiffer punishment against rapists to mitigate the increase in race cases of rape against a girl child in the country. The upper chamber also called on the security agencies to strictly enforce laws against child marriages to protect the girl child. These resolutions of the Senate followed a motion by Senator Sandy Onu on the recent death of two girls as a result of gender and sexual based violence in Lagos and Edo states, respectively. Uwa Omozua, a 111 undergraduate of the University of Benin, was allegedly raped by 11 men in a Pentecostal church in Benin City on the 27th of May 2020. She later died at the University of Benin Teaching Hospital, UBTH, where she was taken for medical treatment. Joining us now to discuss this is a counselor, Bolanli Ajibala. Thank you, Ajibala, for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> the police said they have arrested a suspect. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, well, I would say there are so many conflicting stories because um, I think earlier today there was a video being um, circulated of the um, sister of the victim. She was claiming that um, police had told them that they needed money for mobilization. The father had been insulted and harassed. And then it was shortly after we got um, information that okay, they had arrested someone based on um, forensic reports. They had lifted his um, fingerprints from one of the, from the uh, fire extinguisher. Then there's another conflicting twist, um, tweet on uh, Twitter from someone claiming to be a member of DSS. He's saying that, they are, that the main suspects are the, pastor's wife, the pastor and his wife of the church where the, where the crime was perpetrated that the pastor and the um, suspect is claiming the pastor paid him to carry out the crime so that the church could trend. So at this point, we don't even know who to believe or what to believe. We have to watch as the story unfolds before we get a better and clearer picture. Yeah, for a moment, let's let's stick to the story given by the police that a suspect has been arrested mm. um, due to the investigation, forensic investigation, investigation and, and fingerprints found on the, the fire extinguisher that was supposedly the, the instrument, um, the, the weapon of, of that caused the death of, that was used to, to kill Uwa. Mm -hmm. Now, do they have a database of fingerprints of criminals who have been arrested for them to have come up with that <laughs> result saying... You know, they found the person based on fingerprints. Do we, do, do, do our police have such a data? Ah, well, I'm not, a, I'm not an expert on that, so mm. I wouldn't really know. But what I'm hearing from others is that um, everybody has a BVN number. And for us to have, uh, before, when, when they were doing registration for, I think, banks, as at that time, that we're having BVN numbers yes. um, assigned to everyone, fingerprints were taken. For you to register your phone number now, your fingerprints have to be taken. So the assumption is that there is a database of fingerprints that they can assign to people to, and they, that they, they, they are using, and that's what they have used to identify the, um, the so-called um, suspect. suspect. Yeah. So the that's the assumption okay. we are giving right now. Okay. The, the Senate is considering stiffer penalties for rape. Do you think this will deter mm. rapists? As um, disheartening as it sounds, no. Last year, they were pushing for a death sentence. It still didn't deter people. The penal code right now is um, life imprisonment for rape and 14 years for attempted rape. And the cases still haven't reduced. They are, getting, they are getting higher rather than reducing. So I don't think it, a stiffer penalty, a stiffer, um, what would they put, a stiffer, uh, stiffer, uh, I don't know what English to use. But as far as I know, even making it more, even making, increasing the number of years they would spend in jail, increasing the um, punishments they will be given, it won't reduce it. Because there are a whole lot of other factors involved in why cases of rape are still ongoing and would still continue to happen. All right, now, finally, how do we begin to address the narrative, that the culture of blaming, always blaming the victim and mm -hmm. the perpetrators go caught free? How do we as a people, as a society, begin to change this narrative of now actually blaming the perpetrators and not the victim? 
we still have to continue re-educating our people. That's the only way right now, because whether or not we want to accept it, we live in a male-dominated society. And um, another thing we're facing is a lot, where there's a lot of... Um, how, like, which English would I use? Like, a, a, in terms of educating people as per the rape culture, the stories have been blurred by media, have been blurred by um, lawmakers, have been blurred by people with their own agenda. So a lot of people have their own perspectives, their own opinions. So if um, at some point all the all the lawmakers, all the CSOs, all the advocates involved can come together and speak with one voice, then we can start re-educating people. Because it starts with one person before we can reach a multitude. Ms. Ayola, it's been a pleasure having you join us on the news. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Thank you for having me over.